Mind Gap Podcast. Welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, as well as our guests, who we'll get to in a second, what is the best excuse for being late you've ever heard or used? Okay. Well, I think we should front load also the guests. Pause. Keep that in your mind. Guests we have here. We have two members from the wonderful band Potion Cellar. We've got Austin Reno and we've got Andy. Welcome. Hi. That's us. Greetings. That sounds like us, too. Yeah. <laughs> Super pumped to have you here. Uh, I am so excited because you guys have a new EP coming out. We're going to talk all about it uh, in just a moment. But going back to our opening question here, Justin asked, what is the best excuse for being late you've heard or used? I have one in my back pocket that is that also... It's also it's, it's also like, yeah, I haven't I used it yet. It's my Trump okay. card. That I'm going to cop th- out and say that I made an excuse on the way here while I was late. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, what was it, Andy? Uh, dude, dinner was taking too long to make. You know, I just, I'm on the way. Construction. I, I'll be there. Trust me. It was both. It was both. Man, dinner yeah. and oh, construction. Yeah. Okay. Dinner and construction. Yeah, Hot dogs Hey, we were still, that hard to We make. were here early. <laughs> Uh, dude, them strawberries, though, they take forever. <laughs> yeah, man, you got to de hole them and everything like that. You slice yeah. them up if you want, yeah. you know, because that's the follow up <laughs> question, which is, well, what did you have for dinner? You know? Oh, right. <laughs> Classy salmon on the grill with uh, chicken cordon potatoes. blue. Yeah. You know, just, you know, only the best. <laughs> Straight <laughs> potion sellers here. eating good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Life's been Austin, going to potion seller. <laughs> Um, excuse for being late that you've used or I hate, I hate being late. So I, I'm very like not late often, but I feel like if I have heard an excuse recently, I feel like Jake is late every time (laughs) our bass player is late everywhere. So maybe that was going to be the follow up question is if you can get call out the one member of the band because oh, yeah. every, every group's got the person, you know. So yeah. It, actually, yeah, it'll be Jake. And it's because he he's late everywhere because he has narcolepsy. So he's asleep at every moment that he's not like doing an activity. He's pretty much asleep. Legit and so, narcolepsy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So he's just you should see him like on the way to shows and stuff out like a light. The second yeah, we, we get on the highway, we went to Monster oh, Jam shit. and this guy was asleep. Yeah. And to see at Monster Jam. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's bonkers. impressive. Listen, I, of all excuses, like that's medically allowed. Yeah. You know, it's just <laughs> like, I mean, the guy's got narcolepsy. Um, I yeah, but it's know. band practice. Like, <laughs> He's like, get over it, dude. He's like, we just got done with the song and he's passed out, you know, mid set. <laughs> he normally shows work. up with beer, though. So he does show up with beer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We yeah. offset yeah. it. So no, Jake, Jake is the best, but he does have narcolepsy and we, we feel for him. So. Wow, that's got to be yeah. tough, man. Like, I can fall asleep pretty quick. You know, my wife's always like, dude, like, what's it's crazy. You're like five minutes in, you're asleep. I'm like, what do you want from me? I'm, I'm yeah. efficient. <laughs> you know? dude, the lights are say- out. It's, I got a snack in my stomach. I'm asleep. Good to go, man. <laughs> I will say it's great to have a baked in excuse, though, that no one can question, you know, because like, yeah. Doug, you always we talked about you, you know, in, in a job, you get the one the one card. Is this one? Your, is this the one? This is the one. card. This about? is always the ace up your sleeve. Yeah. I have explosive diarrhea like that gets you out yeah. of everything. <laughs> going to question that one time. You, you, you get it one pants, time because no one's going to be like, oh, <laughs> oh, what? Like, no, one's like, you keep doing it. People are like, hey, man, change your diet or like. God forbid someone goes, I don't believe you. And they that's like, just you in. as uh, that's just as valid as narcolepsy. I honestly. agree, <laughs> but you only get to use it once. It's a new yeah, narcolepsy card. is baked in. You can use that whenever. It's like, yeah, this that's so that's see, he's got it made in the shade right there. I did see a TikTok. <laughs> I did see Real a TikTok lucky. of a guy who right. recorded himself going up to his boss and be like, Hey man, I gotta go home. He's like, Why? He goes, I shit my pants. His boss goes, What? He goes, Yeah, man, I shit my pants. Like, I gotta go. And the guy's like, All right, man. Like, he walked out, he's just smiling, he's like, It worked. I'm like, Yeah, you get one. Like you get one of those. And yeah. then 
you can't you can't use it again so use it that's wisely. fire <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that's fire no, no one's gonna argue that <laughs> what, what? No. you shit your pants again it's, it's, gonna, like, it's gonna crazy go you're gonna be like dude yeah. i shit my pants i gotta go like <laughs> yeah. kudos adios <laughs> sir when I lived in Chicago, I always loved loved using the CTA as a scapegoat. Oh, yeah. There was many times, I would say like 75 to 80% of the time, it was legit because the CTA and I had some like karmic entanglement and it just, we did not get along all the time. Bus but, or train? Both. Uh, train mostly. Oh. Train mostly. But bus is, bus is even better to use that excuse with. But, you know, if, if, if something did happen, I could always rely and be like... Ah, the fucking CTA. I just, I don't know, man. I don't the know. The only downside with that is there's a paper trail with that. You can check mm. and see if there's any sort of like, you know. And actually, they would they would <coughs> provide slips to people that they could hand to their bosses to be like, the train was late. Oh, it's yeah. official. Right, right, right. Oh. Yeah. So that, wow. that's it depends. Only the thing is, it depends on how late you are. Right. Like, if you're 15 minutes late, easy to blame the train because it was packed. I missed one. I had to wait for the next one. Whatever. Mm. You know, if you're... An hour and a half late, you you may have you may need to slip from the CTA. <laughs> I shit my pants. You know that's I shit my pants on the on CTA, the CTA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I wasn't the only one. There were multiple people shitting their pants. <laughs> it was a, it was the damnedest thing. It was like a house. It was a domino effect. It was awesome. I shit mine, and then just straight down the the car. Someone goes that's me like too, that, uh, and they just start going. It's like in that movie Stand By Me. You see that movie? Uh, oh, yeah. The vomit? Yeah, with the, the Barfarama. Yeah, the pie eating contest. Yeah. Yes, that's so good. I should pull audio from that movie sometime. Noted. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Well, Andy, Austin, so glad you are here. Like I mentioned earlier, you all are one, what, two fifths of Potion Seller. Did I get that, that fraction correct? Um, Nailed it. And you've got a new EP. Coming out July 19th, the day that this is releasing, it's out. It's Today, ready to yeah. go. Really? It's out right now, and it's called When They Get Old. Mm-hmm. Um, let's start with that. Right now, where can people listen to it? Where is it available? How can people find this? That's going to be streaming on uh, every platform imaginable. If you uh, have the internet, you could search Potion Seller, and you're not going to find it. But if you go on Spotify <laughs> or like Apple Music... <laughs> You're probably gonna find it. Nice. Yes. So yeah, it'll be everywhere. <laughs> Bandcamp, Spotify, the whole uh, kit and caboodle. That's awesome. That's yeah. so exciting. Uh, I uh, I really enjoyed. Uh, oh my god, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, Monarch Club Island. is that it? That the one that's out right now? The oh, Monarch Club. Club. Yeah. yeah. Monarch Club. I was like, huh, I'm terrible with names, and I'm now I'm under pressure. I didn't prep the name of it, and now I'm going to say it wrong, and I'm going to be an asshole. Monarch Club. Great, great video, by the way, too. Excellent oh, work. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. That was so, so much fun. fun. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's really really, and I I told you this in pre roll, and I say it again. It's really good. It sounds really good. Uh, you guys should be very very proud of this. So, you, round of applause. Nailed it. To you Nailed guys. Again, this, this I, I agree as well. <laughs> I, I second everything he said. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. You, guys. Are, yeah, Thank no, you. Yeah, we, you were kind enough to share it. Yeah. share it with us. And uh, I, I got to say, uh, my favorite track, Love Island. That's, that's, oh, that's, hell yeah. That's a banger, yeah, man. Dude. You got So, that got, one, are, do you know, uh, do you like Home Safe? They're from Chicago, Doug. I don't know if you ever heard of them. I don't think I've ever heard of Home Safe. So... Home safe. One of the dudes in Home Safe is in Knuckle Puck as well, but oh, it's uh, I know so it's Puck. Ryan from Knuckle Puck who I think plays bass in Knuckle Puck. He okay. plays guitar in Home Safe, and uh, we had our buddy Tyler Albertson who sings and and plays bass in Home Safe uh, tossed a little feature on there, so it was super sick. Shout out T Boney. Yeah, that's that, that is a really so cool. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I gotta say also Austin. I think with, uh, at, at uh, Noah's uh, wedding, I was like, hey, man, what's new in music? And you shot like a couple bands my way. I fell in yeah. love with them. Like, just, I was like. There's more where that came from. <laughs> oh, I know. I was like, I was you like, know That's more like, bands? He's like, potion seller, if only, if only, <laughs> backpacks. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I think um, Church it was. <laughs> it was the one uh, from. Uh, it's, it's escaping now, but it was like the the uh, from Jesus Christ, Doug. You did. I think I gave you no what pressure. Pre- That's that- it. No pressure. Yeah. Thank you. I was like, it was no something, and I don't know. Ironically, what it is, no pressure, and Doug just felt that pressure. I felt the pressure <laughs> yeah. that came crumbling down on me, but no pressure. Like I was like, oh, this is 
this is exactly my jam. Like really good, really fun. I really yeah. enjoyed that stuff. So that's um, like a that's like a super group band too. There's a bunch of dudes in that band that are in like other really big pop punk bands and stuff too. So yeah, no pressure rocks. Yeah, they're really really good. So it's super exciting. So let's talk let's talk about this EP, man. Like you know, uh, what was it like? Making this EP, I mean, is, is this your first? Because you guys did Jerry, you did, you did. It was a previous EP that you guys put together. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, which by the way, Jerry, again, no bullshit. One of my favorite songs. Like it's on my regular rotation. That song comes on. I'm like, yeah, my daughter. I'm like, hey, this is Noah's brother. That's what I tell her. I'm like, this is Noah's oh, brother yeah. right here. He's singing. She's like, oh, cool. I'm like, yeah, that's right. It's good. Hell it's good yeah, stuff. old Gerald. So, <laughs> <laughs> Um, but super cool. So what's it, what was it, what was different between making your other EP versus this one? What was the process like? Yeah. So actually the, the first EP that I just went and did that. So Ryan Malixi, uh, is our buddy who lives over in Wyandotte. Well, he doesn't live in Wyandotte, but that's where the studio is over there. It's like 15, 20 minutes outside of Detroit. Um, and so the first EP, that was like two years ago. Uh, I just went and recorded that. That was like before I had even really like found people to be in the band. Um, and so we put out the EP and then, or I guess like we, I, we all came together because we needed people in the pictures and in the music video. So we found yeah. the band before the EP was released. The first Dude, one. You rec- you had the songs <laughs> recorded and you gave them to me and you were like, Hey, do you want to play in this band? That sounds like this. Here's the EP. And I was like, songs are written i could play that sure let's let's do it up. let's, let's do that shows. have some fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah so i just that one was just recorded with ryan by by myself and then after that we put out some singles that we like self-recorded and then sent to ryan to mix and master and whatnot and then um we put out like a couple acoustic songs too and then there was losing it and jerry were two singles that we went and did studio with ryan before the ep um, and then after those, uh, that's when I guess it was February. We went back um, with Ryan to the studio for um, three days and recorded the whole EP there and um, had a couple of like loose ends to tie up. John went back and recorded drums on um, two I think Natty, Natty Ice and uh, Country. Cu- uh, <laughs> it's called Faster. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, demo names. Demo names. Demo <laughs> names. Yeah. But so John went back a couple weeks later and recorded the drums for the last leftover songs. And then um, everything was done. And then the last thing, we actually got the Tyler feature on Love Island back like three weeks ago. Oh, so, cool. <clears throat> so that came in and. Yeah, studio was a good time. Should we tell them the um about the shit? The- <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's a hundred percent you need to. Go ahead. Day, day Go ahead. two, I'm in the studio. I'm cutting some guitar tracks, and like someone pokes their head in the in the control room. Me and Ryan are the only two in there. He, he's like, "Hey, uh, the toilet overflowed, Ryan. Like, we kind of have it candled, so keep doing what you're doing, but like." Just to let you know, there, there's some there's some water on the bathroom. And he's like, you know, mop it up. This happened before, like, 15 minutes later. They're like, uh, Ryan, you should come look at this. <laughs> like, immediately, like, oh, no. Uh, and we walk around the corner to, like, Jake ankle deep in water. And, like, up in his <laughs> oh, hands, shit. just, like, scooping water. Oh, like, poop. Out of the toilet. Like, like poop shit water. water. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, so the whole studio like flooded, like the whole half of the the studio oh, flooded yeah. with shit oh, water. So. Also, horrible. and and shout out to to Jake because <laughs> yeah. Jake really grabbed that situation <laughs> yeah. by the horns. Yeah. He like found the nearest Home Depot and he went and got one of those industrial sized snakes and he like spent two hours unclogging all the shit that was stuck in there. And wow. Jesus. Yeah, so does that? I'm just assuming that it gets that bathroom just gets beat to hell. I mean, is it uh, or is it old? Yeah. And do we yeah. need to raise money for it, for 
a plumbing update for them. Yeah, Eureka Studios probably needs a plumbing update. But... They probably do, but also, yeah, like five dudes, you know, spending a week at the studio. And well, it's that just was like, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. Was, it an, was it an unfair? Did that plumbing ever stand a chance? Really? <laughs> he he snaked out like three months worth of poo. Yeah, like, like it wasn't oh, us. It wasn't you know just what I mean? us. It was day one. You right. Know? Like, yeah. That was EP uh, upon EP <laughs> upon EP. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, oh, Forrest Green goodness. was in there. We could blame it. It was them. probably Forrest Green. That's true. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that's wow. That, uh, th- that brought back memories. Uh, when I did improv, there was this, uh, this, this, I don't know what you, it, was, it wasn't a, th- I guess it's t- technically a theater. It seated like 50 people, but they had like, they had the, the weakest toilets in there. And it was like toilets for both performers and the audience. And I had oh, to no. like take a shit before <laughs> the show. But like it was like in between shows. And so I'm sitting there trying to shit. There was like barely any toilet paper. And I was also like, I just knew. And they were unisex. And I was like, I knew there was a line outside. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. Like This I was is like, Doug's worst nightmare. It's like Pamela flushing, Anderson is outside sweating. waiting. <laughs> I'm, I'm flushing. And it's like weak, just weak plumbing. It's just like slowly just oh, like no. going and it's not going down i'm like i can't leave a turd in here for whoever's <laughs> coming in next and i was like i remember hearing someone else say oh i always just sort of pump soap into the toilet just so it like kind of freshens it up a little bit so i was like trying to pump dial soap and then someone starts knocking on the door i'm like i'm almost done and i come out i'm in there too long everyone knows what's happening just <laughs> sweating I come out. I'm like, "How's it going?" Of course, it's a woman. I'm like, "What's up?" And then I just walk by, and I'm like, "Fuck!" I'm so sorry. Like, just, <laughs> just so brutal. I'm like, "I gotta perform in a little bit," you know. So uh, I don't know. That's awful. It's just terrifying. You so, gotta well. take the pre-show poop, though. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> crucial. What What are you gonna do? Just be up there and be like, "Ugh." Oh, uh, yeah. You know, like I'm sure adrenaline yeah. will kick in to some degree to like you know <laughs> take care of business. But once that runs out, then you're really in like the red zone. <laughs> Where it's like, yeah, your mind's like, not cool. thinking right. You're not performing anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> your body's like, I did what I had to to get you through the performance. The rest is on you. And then you're like, right. oh, just trying to run out of there. <laughs> it always comes back, comes back on stage. To they want us to take another bow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. No. <laughs> Dude, we're doing an encore. It's like, give me, just do an acoustic part for me. I'll be right back. <laughs> That's uh, wild. What a fun story. You'd be like, hey, we'll always remember this EP because, you know, the toilet mm-hmm. overflowed, which is super cool. We were shin deep in shit. Well, <laughs> yeah. Where, where Potion Cellar goes, poop follows. Yeah. It's true. It's kind of me, too, I'm, you know? Pretty stinky bunch. <laughs> yeah, it's a stink, stinky bunch of boys. <laughs> so, was, um, Justin, go ahead. I interrupted you. No, I was just going to say, so how long did it take you guys to put put these songs together for, like, from from concept when you start kind of thinking of the first song like what is what is the process like time wise to get you into the studio like how long until you're like yeah we're comfortable you know going in there and laying this down so yeah how long did we practice i mean we probably spend like a couple months practicing the songs yeah. before going to the studio just so everyone like knows what we need to play yeah um, a lot of the demos just come from him with like MIDI drums and like guitar structures already there. So like mm-hmm. by the time we get together, we pretty much know the structure of the song. Um, little tweaks and personality flares come in there, but it doesn't take a whole lot of time to like construct the strong song from scratch. It's yeah already there more or less. Um, so it takes a couple of practices to yeah. make it feel comfortable and to dial it in. Yeah. You know, make yeah. it, make it a real song, but yeah. And it still doesn't even have to be like perfect when you get to the studio because you end up like changing a lot in the studio anyway, oh, sure. kind of yeah. uh, adding bits and pieces in the studio. And like, that's another thing I'll say about Ryan is that like he, if anybody's in a band out there and you have the opportunity to work with him, I definitely would. He's a pro. Um, he's a pro. He like understands so many different parts of music and like he he just understands uh like all the the technical side as well as the songwriting side. So he's, well, he's like, a musician first, so he understands sure. what you're sitting there feeling like when you're playing your parts to a click. Um, so that helps and again, he's a pro musician, so he's seen the process done by other people and has his own tweaks on it and makes it sound really really good. It's really clean. Yeah, sure. When you're working with a good producer, they're kind of come in and they're going to drop those little, hey, did you guys think about doing something like this? And yeah. you're just like, whoa, opens up a whole other avenue of thinking that maybe, 
you hadn't even considered because you've been rehearsing it one way for so long. And then, like you said, you get in there and that collaboration hits. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and he does that a lot, too. He's got a lot like a lot of little pieces to add. Like, uh, And it was funny, too, because I don't know if you guys heard our song Big Slug, but there was... Um, there's a part in that song. So that was one that like we recorded at home and sent to him to mix and master. But there's a line in that song like, or I'll just sleep forever. And then he put in like the iPhone, like alarm sound, oh, like in that cool. little space. And it was just like, I would have never thought of that. It's like the dopest thing I've ever heard. Like, yeah, yeah. Nice one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. I love that. That's really cool. Those are like the little things that like, I think that they add so much to like those i don't know like you hear those little bits and pieces where like oh wow that's that's so nice layered on things that just add an extra element to it, it it's and more production if it makes layers and more relatable it, it it's all the things mm-hmm. yeah i agree i think that's makes really it cool per- makes it pro <laughs> yep. it makes it pro <laughs> That's so cool. You can sound when a band is not a pro. (laughs) (laughs) He he made a sound pro. This is incredible. Yeah, from potion seller to potion seller. (laughs) Nah, you're a marketing genius. I love this. So and so, Brian, this is uh, what's what's his name? Ryan uh, Ryan Malixi, and he's in uh, Hot Mulligan, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's the the fire guitar solo, super sexy guitar player extraordinaire in the number one hot new band. The number one hot new band. Dude, I fucking love Hot Mulligan. They're amazing. So how did you guys get teamed up with him? Uh, we go way back, honestly. Like we uh my old bands and his old band and some uh Nate's and John's, which is the other other dudes in our band, um like we all were in bands and in the Michigan music scene at the, as the same time as hot Mulligan was when we were all younger. So like 2014, 15, 16, 17. Um, and so we always played shows with them and my old band toured with them a couple times. And, um, yeah, Ryan was like their, uh, he came in after be after they were banned for like two or three years, I think. So Chris met him at Michigan State, and then they were like roommates or something, and he joined the band. But uh, yeah, we've just been like tight with them since back in the day, and just a lot of shows and tours and stuff like that. That's really cool. I, I yeah. love that sort of community, you know, mm-hmm. of people that like can come together and help each other out. I think that's so important. Do you find that I don't know in your experience that. Um, some people are maybe a little more protective of that space being like, you know, are, are most people pretty cool about helping? Or there's some people that are like, no, you know, they put the walls up and like, find your own, no. find your own way in seats taken. I feel like Michigan DIY is pretty on top of like making people feel included. Um, mm-hmm. I've never played like a, a house show or a DIY show where it's like, oh, don't do that here. Or, or you're, you know, like do it like this next time. Like everyone's like, my home is your home and and everyone here wants to have a good time so let's enjoy each other's weird music together (laughs) yeah Yeah, that's awesome yeah i agree and i think really like if it's a if it's a a band that might have like more of a following or is more or more popular i really from what i it seems like i can tell it it really just matters if like if they like your music, then they generally will like put you on and, and, you know, like support you in that way. But it's the same thing as like, I don't, you know, we don't really listen to music we don't like. So like, you know, that makes sense to me, I guess. Yeah. But That's we're making cool. this kind of music because we like this kind of music and other people make <laughs> similar music because they also like similar music. Yeah. Right. That makes sense. Now I know, in a lot of those creative spaces, you know, sometimes it can get uh, a little competitive and yeah. uh, it's nice and it's tough, right? Because you're making something and, and again, or at least in my experience, like with comedy, it's like, hey, you know, we're fun and whatever. And then you see like another comedian or a comedic group is starts doing really well. We're like, but 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 we're doing we're just <laughs> as good as they are. Why can't and it's a lot? Sometimes it's luck. Yeah, it's just yeah. whatever, you know, and it's in and, yeah. and learning to be like, it's fucking awesome. That you all are doing well. I'm happy for you. Like I support you. It has nothing to do with you or me. It's just the creative space, and I'm pumped. You know, to see people do well. That's uh, you know a mindset. It took me a little while to get into. But it takes <laughs> yeah. a long time. Yeah. It takes a long time too, and a lot of I think uh, self 
like you've got to be confident in yourself and your abilities before you can hit that point where you realize the table's big enough. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of seats at the table just because someone else succeeds doesn't mean yeah. that you're not coming up next or that you took, if you are succeeding, you're taking away from someone else. Like, I think that's a lot of young artists. I think from, from filmmakers to comedy, to music, to like, I think there's, a lot of thought that if someone else succeeds, that's me not succeeding. And it's like, no, that's just, that's just another good band made, made it like good for them. And we can, you know, there's, we're all doing our thing. And I think it takes, it takes a while to kind of hit that point. But once you do, it just makes the community that you roll in uh, from my experience, it makes it that much richer because it moves from competition, which healthy competition is always good. Like friendly Mm -hmm. competition is always good, but it takes it from that like cutthroat competition to, everyone is is raising the ships together and i just think that's a cool that's a cool space to get into you know yeah i think so too like i uh i don't know i think that uh supporting other people because kind of like you said like when i was younger i would definitely feel like the competition a little bit more and be like the more like why them and not me type of thing but now it's like i'm enjoying the journey like and i enjoy the hustle and i enjoy the little like (laughs) shitty shows and like that's fun to me and there's literally like just like you said there's room at the table there's literally like an infinite amount of room at that right. table and there's like no rush for anything it's like very kind of we've kind of said since like the beginning of potion Sire, which it might be a little more like um like trying to be serious about it now um than the start but like it's having you know no expectation really but just like doing what we want to do so yeah. I think success can look different to different people too. I mean, 100%. you can you can be that band that has a hundred million TikTok followers and is playing around the world. <coughs> Sorry, uh, but that doesn't mean that they're any better than you are musically, or even better off as a person, or in the place that they need to be in. So, like, yeah. you know, enjoy the shows you have, and and enjoy the people around you that are supporting you when you're doing that. And Facts. if you bring good atmosphere you'll you'll surround yourself with a good atmosphere and and take it further yeah i think it's again the you know from what justin and i do you know and, and even to other things like when you're you're putting something out there ideally you're hoping that people will watch it listen to it enjoy it and uh you know and and that that's that to me is like i want to i want to create something that i want to create and put it out there and hopefully people will find their way there and they'll enjoy it and focus less on Man, I haven't gotten any likes on this. I haven't gotten any views. I mean, it yeah. sucks, right? Because the whole yeah. point of you creating this is for people to. I mean, still trying to get rich like, and famous. Like, <laughs> right. still trying to get yeah, rich yeah. and famous. But hey, listen, listen. Not you wouldn't us. mind no, not sir. having to have a day yeah. job yeah. Yeah. and yeah. do this all the time. <laughs> right, you know, right. That's and, why we're and, all and here. Whatnot. This so, is a so, hobby. It's so, just fine by me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's it's yeah. it's definitely something that you want to hopefully you know as you're creating something get get an audience for, but. I try to remind myself that also there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of things competing for people's attention. And, you know, it's like, you know, Justin and I are two dudes on a podcast. We are the first two dudes ever to have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't people listening to our room. podcast? You know, like, how come no one? We got a fart soundboard and everything. How come no one's listening to us? You know, like, it's we, we understand there's a lot of stuff out there and it's it's fine. And, you know, we have we have our, our little tight knit community and we love it. And we love the people that listen to us and support us. And I just try to focus on that. I'm like, this is cool that like. Austin, I've met you because of this podcast, because I mm-hmm. got to know your brother. And over time, like he's become a significant part of our community. And he's like, yeah, I have a brother. And I'm like, oh, you do. And then like, you know, it's like became this thing where we got to all these sort of connections we built on that has been really, really cool. And that's the stuff where I'm like, that's a, that's success. You know, to kind of yeah. go to Andy's point, like that's a successful, successful thing. It, it may not be like, hey, we get 10 grand a month you know, from doing mm-hmm. this, but in our own way, this has been a really cool opportunity to sort of like build a community and meet people and, and connect in this way, which has been super awesome. So. Yeah, for sure. Shout out Noah too. Of course, every time I'm on here, we got to shout <laughs> out time. Noah Reno. Of course. Shout out Noah. He was on last week's episode, which was also great. It's a family affair. It's a family <laughs> affair, brother. It's a family affair. Reno point to you. <laughs> right? Mind Gap Podcast featuring the Renos. 
Uh, so you guys, uh, you guys, uh, you have some. I know you, you guys are playing at Excellency Excellency Music Fest. Do you have any other shows uh, upcoming or anything like that that you know are in the works? <laughs> this would be the announcement, huh? Yeah. So I mean, we can. We'll tell them about like the EP release. Oh yeah, show. for sure. So yeah. Okay. So I mean, we're announcing the EP release show. So if this episode is out on Friday. And the EP is out right this second. I think we are announcing it on Monday, but Ooh. you heard it here first. Uh, our EP Ooh. release show will be at Skeletones in Grand Rapids with, or on September seventh, with Convenient Trash, Low Phase, and Pesky Kid. Uh, it's a mixed bill, but it's all like full band, all full band stuff. But it's going to be. Super dope. Convenient Trash has been a band in the Michigan scene for a really long time, but they kind of spread out and moved around and maybe play like one or two shows a year. And this is going to be that show for them this year, which is sick. Um, And then Low Phase is a Grand Rapids local. They're um, very like dreamy, kind of like indie, um, you know, style. And um, they always, they've got like a good crowd here and their music is sweet. And then Pesky Kid is from Bay City, and uh, he and his band make like almost like indie alternative rock with like some hip hop in there and like just like a very hodgepodge of, of stuff. But he's like an incredible artist and does a lot of other stuff besides music. But uh, that'll be on September 7th. We'll announce it in a couple days and tickets will be available online for uh, for people to purchase and hopefully we can sell it out. It'll be sick. Hell yeah. Dude, absolutely. I know right where tits. I just looked it up and I know right where this is. I will 100. If I'm in town, I will 100% be at that show. It's right next Sweet. to the record shop. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's right next to my barber shop. So everyone should know what that is. <laughs> you can get your that haircut is... and go see a rock show. And go see a rock show. <laughs> that is super cool. That's very, very exciting. Yeah. Um, cool. So Excellency to... Fest is going to be sick too, though. Yeah, We're very Excellency excited. Is, yeah. is going to be hype. Saw the lineup for that man, free throw and all that other stuff. That's a that's a good show, man. That's exciting. When's that? <laughs> <take place? laughs> what? Uh, that's on. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That's on August third. That's in Bay City. Um, yeah, they moved the venue. It's gonna be like outside, I think, in the in a big um, I don't know fairgrounds or park lawn type of deal. So they'll have a few stages out there, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be dope. That's awesome. That'll be a fun one. That's so exciting. How fun for you guys. I'm pumped for you. Good show. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. So, gang, check out the EP, When They Get Old, out right now as you're listening to this. And go buy your fucking tickets, man. Go check check out the show at Skeletone. Skeletone. That's a cool place. (laughs) As I'm like furiously like looking at all the tabs, I have at Skeletor, uh, <laughs> at the Skeletones, and the Excellency Music Festival looks like great times. Very very yes. cool. Yes, super pumped for you guys. Thank well, you. Well, let's uh, let's let's change gears here a little bit. Um, there was a there was a fun little article that was that came out uh, in mid June. Uh, this is the headline, which I think is really, really cool. Ohio attorney, uh, Jesus Christ, Ohio attorney. Get it together, sus- Doug. Uh, Ohio attorney suspended over pooping in a Pringles can has license <laughs> reinstated. So according to, according to this article from the Columbus Dispatch, uh, an Ohio attorney who was disciplined for pooping in a Pringles can and tossing it into a parking lot got his law license reinstated on Tuesday. So, uh, so apparently they took it away. Yeah. So they took it away. Cause they're like, this isn't <laughs> cool, but now I guess, you know, he's ungrounded and now he can practice law. He's again. explained his reasoning. Yeah. Uh, he had, it's, it's, it was one of the best arguments he's ever made. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently uh, the court said Tuesday that Blakesley, Jake, Jack Blakesley is the guy who did this had complied with Jack the conditions. Blakesley. Uh, including no further misconduct to get his license back. So they're like, you can't poop any more Pringles cans and just leave it around. <laughs> All right, Jack. 
He's like, okay, I won't. You do didn't it. say anything about pooping in Doritos minis cans. Yeah, what's up now? <laughs> uh, a, nice little, uh, a nice little bag of Sun Chips. Is that, <laughs> is that fine? <laughs> So this is probably my, my favorite uh, my, my favorite paragraph in this. It says, In November 2021, surveillance cameras recorded footage of Blakesley, a criminal defense attorney, dropping a Pringles potato chip can into the parking lot of a crime victim advocacy center. The can contained human feces. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, clearly, a part of his defense was like, Hey, I didn't target anyone. And I pulled the Pringles prank at least 10 times this year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not helping. And, no. And apparently after the prank, like he was scheduled to, uh, so Blakesley had known the victim advocates at the center for years and was scheduled to see them in court 15 minutes after the Pringles deposit. As they put it. I, I just <laughs> liked how they call this the Pringles deposit. Yeah. Someone was having fun with that. At the time, Blakesley was representing someone accused in a capital murder case. He's like, real quick, before we get started, I got to do something. I just got to, I got a ritual I do before we kick off the case. It's totally cool. No big deal. And he just goes and you takes want- a dump in a Pringles can and leaves it in the parking lot. <laughs> Maybe you want to know how I always win? I'll tell you how I always win. Pringles deposits. <laughs> So I love that he calls this a prank because I I mean, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but whenever I see a random Pringles can out in the wild, I got to open it to see if I can get to those Pringles. You know what I mean? You know, of course. <laughs> That's what you do. Uh, well, so, I, what I don't get is why is because uh, it's essentially just like littering, right? Yeah. Like that, that would be the charge. <laughs> So uh, is, uh, at bare minimum, it's littering. So yeah. <laughs> is is a single littering charge enough to lose your like law license? Like litter or littering isn't chill by any means, but like that's enough for you to like not be able to practice law anymore. I think this was a little more serious than littering. I think there was. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I get that there's poo poo yeah. in there, but like, when this- did he put the poop in the Pringle can? Like, was that's it right. fresh in the parking lot? Or did he set it, it like- on fire? <laughs> right. Did he See, just hang now, his ass out the window, hold the yeah. Pringles can down there, and then, like... See, my thought is, and again, this may be incorrect. Last week's episode, I totally misinterpreted a situation, and it was hilarious when I came to a realization about what it was. Uh, but my interpretation is this guy is, like, in a nice gray suit, and he goes to the garage, he gets in his back seat, and he just drops a load into the Pringles can. He's just got a just perfect seal. What flavor was the Pringle can? That's a good question. Very (laughs) important. That's an important detail. Mesquite or sour cream and onion? Those are my (laughs) two guesses. It's got to be sour cream and onion. (laughs) Not original. It's not original. (laughs) That's my favorite flavor, too, sour cream and onion. So (laughs) (laughs) So he just gets the perfect seal, just just squeezes one out, which is risky, I think, because, you you know, sometimes you know the consistency, sometimes you don't, whatever. And then just (laughs) pops the can on and then just goes grenade and throws it in there and then you know takes off so what if he did it in the can and then like resealed the foil oh, and then oh, and then no. snuck it back into the store and like oh. put it on the now shelf? that's a deposit that's now we're that's a deposit I think that's like that's littering, littering. <laughs> criminal littering with criminal intent in the first degree or some shit like that's like that might be manslaughter <laughs> <laughs> it might be manslaughter. I love it. It's uh, it is I don't know, man. That is wild. And to be like I, well, here's the thing too. He got suspended. Now they're like, we're giving it, we're giving you your license back. I don't know what's worse, right? They're like, all right, you served your time, Mr. Poopy Pringles. Here's your license back. You can keep going now. And you, now this is forever on his record as like you know, it's it's you know he's he's it's like Blakesley, an attorney since 1976, had no other discipline on his record, but there's that one where he did the <laughs> the poopy Pringles can thing. on your permanent record like a dozen <laughs> times though, and, and admitted to it. Like, yeah, yeah. No, I did, I did it more than once. <laughs> I did it ten times this year. What's the big deal? I just can imagine him being like, "Why am I here, man?" Like, yeah, you of course. Just I open did. his trunk and it's just filled with empty Pringles cans. And he's just like, "Ooh, he's like, which I'm one gonna use all today? of these?" Right. Uh, <laughs> so that got me thinking vinegar. as as him claiming this as a prank. Have you guys ever like you know done a prank or been you know on the receiving end of a prank that has gone too far or has gone off the rails? And if so, do tell. <laughs> 
I have some moments that I'm not proud of. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> and some things are done to me that I hopefully those people aren't proud of. But uh, there was one time when I was like 12 years old. We used to ride all of our bikes around like the neighborhood and stuff with all like the little neighborhood kids. And for some reason, one of the kids got the idea to start collecting roadkill. And uh, <laughs> I don't like where this is going. And uh, it's like 10 of us. So it wasn't me. And I was 12. There's a statute of limitations here. But <laughs> yeah, we like collected a bunch of roadkill and just like started putting in people's mailboxes and whatnot. Oh! <laughs> it's like pretty <laughs> terrible. No! Like not Jesus. super good. Uh, I'm pretty ashamed of that, actually. <laughs> That's a federal offense, opening somebody's business. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As an adult with a house. If I just like went to get the oh, mail I'd one day so, and there's so just upset. like a fucking fucking possum in there, I'm like, ah! <laughs> this is oh my god, they found me! Like it's 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 a side. They're, they're sending me a message. We gotta move, you know. Like, <laughs> I'd like to apologize to the people of Mount Pleasant, Michigan, for <laughs> for doing that to you when nice I was in family. sixth grade. Someone's gonna yeah. be listening to this and they're gonna go. <gasps> Like everything <laughs> pent up for it. decades, it's just going to be a release for them. This is going to be a very cathartic yeah. episode for Mount Pleasant. <laughs> oh my God. That is, uh, thank you for your vulnerability. That's on the that first one. time yeah, that I've said that honesty. publicly. Yeah. So <laughs> this is another exclusive. My fiance only- <laughs> hates that story. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably so. <laughs> yeah. Understandably so. Uh, Oh, Andy, you got anything? You got anything that uh, I'm went failing to, I'm failing to think of any pranks. You're Nothing as good as that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> probably some dumb things that that I shouldn't have done. But no, no right. nothing coming to the That's... top of the head. Well, if something comes comes up. Just let, me, let us know. Justin, we'll do. you got anything? I don't have any good pranks per se f- that I've done. I've done some stuff that I've gotten in trouble for, for sure. <laughs> of course. In yeah, and I think you know a couple of those stories. Yeah. Um, uh, most of them were educational based uh, or that was the intent mm-hmm. but uh, I will uh, relay uh, or retell a story my dad was a firefighter for like 35 years and if you want to see some epic pranks go hang out at a fire department a fire station they are insane and so one of one of my favorite ones that that he pulled now bear in mind this was like 80s early 90s so <laughs> cell phones weren't really like oh, okay like, a keep lot in of this- mind the language that's about to be said it was a different time right so you've all seen die hard three right <laughs> <laughs> um so, no so uh yeah so cell phones weren't really you know like that, that nowadays this prank probably wouldn't play the same but uh one of his good buddies uh, on this on the department uh went on vacation and so my dad put a for sale by owner sign in his in his house, in his lawn, and then put his home number on there. So when he came back, he had like a hundred messages of people calling him, making offers. He had his parents calling like, Jeff, we didn't know you were moving. And this and that. You didn't tell us. And it was just, it was absolute chaos. And to get people to stop, because the number was out there then. Like people had written it down, they were following yeah, up. And it just kept, it was this thing. And my dad, he's like, I was just, I was on the floor. And immediately he called me and he goes, Mike, you're not going to know when, you're not going to know what, but someday you're going to get, I'm going to get you back. And I, if I'm not mistaken to this day, Jeff still has not struck back at my dad and my dad still looks over his shoulder. And this, this must be easy 30 years later. That's an awesome prank. That's an awesome prank. That is funny because like. It's not really harming anybody. It's just no. annoying, but it's also it's really funny, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of the guy who broke up with uh, a woman in Australia, like, and he, he was so mad at her that he, like, he made a flyer that said, like, uh, <laughs> Chewbacca contest, like, call this number, and the person who does the best <laughs> Chewbacca impression will win 100 bucks. and they had all the little clips, and it was all his ex-girlfriend. So she was just getting calls all the time and she was, it was on the news and she's like, this guy's going, I want my hundred dollars. Like they were just, she got all hours of the day. Just people calling and being like, this is my Chewbacca impression. That's awesome too. She's like, I wish she was more mature. I don't know why we're doing this. It just could have been civil, but now here we are dealing with this. (laughs) I'm going to start leaving that in all the bathroom stalls. Right? (laughs) There you go. Right? (laughs) Yeah. That'd be amazing. Uh, One I'm not proud of. In college, my freshman year, uh, I got into a prank war 
with uh, two other guys, and it escalated way too fast. And I am not, I'm a little ashamed <laughs> to say that I'm the one that took it nuclear. Uh, but it started out with simple things where I had a lofted bed, and uh, I would, you know, I had my desk under my lofted bed, and I'd like be on my computer playing games or something. And I had a ladder that went up to the loft, and this guy would always come in, he'd talk to me like through the ladder. He'd be like, hey, man, what's going on? Whatever. And he'd, we'd talk for a while. And I'd kind of be half paying attention because I'm on my computer. He's like, all right, dude, I'll see you. And he would just walk out with the ladder. Like, and I wouldn't notice. Because <laughs> he'd be like, talking me through it. And then he'd just, like, grab it and walk out. And then all of a sudden, I'd stop. And I'd look around. And I'm like, something's missing. And I'm like, <laughs> motherfucker. And I'd go. And his door would be locked. And he'd be like, <laughs> I've got your ladder. And I'm like, god damn it. And then... <laughs> I retaliated somehow, and then I used to get up early, and I'd, I'd work at the library, and so I, I'd get up before everyone else, and I'd go do that. They set up <laughs> – this time was a big deal. This was like 2001. They set up like a, a live webcam outside their door to watch. They rigged some really shitty like bucket of water so that when I opened the door, it would fall on me and get me wet. The problem is they set it up the wrong way, so it, like as I touched the door, it fell forward. And so like I remember like – opening up their door in the morning be like, you fucking missed. And they're like, because they're still asleep. So then I was like, all right, all right. I know the next way to take this, right? This is the next way to, to the next sort of re rebuttal to that is to go into their room when they're not there, go to their mini fridge, take out their ice cubes and pee in the ice cube tray and then put it back. <laughs> oh, that's vile. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was pretty gross. It was pretty gross. And I and I didn't think of how awful that is that I did that. I was like, hey, hey, hey. The standing in the next room. Step. Just like, if they had come in at any point in time, I'm just like sitting there pissing, like in the middle of their room, just pissing in their ice cube tray. Didn't even take it to the bathroom. <laughs> no, didn't even take it to the bathroom. Right there. Because there's too many witnesses. So like, I saw Doug walking with an ice cube tray and then he was really careful. Full of piss. <laughs> After he came out of the bathroom. like asparagus. Very careful coming back with it and he took it into your room. And so somehow they were smart enough as they cracked it open, they're like, this is really yellow. <laughs> they, like, they fortunately spotted it and they were like, what the fuck? And they immediately were like, did you piss in our ice cube tray? And I'm like, I did. And then we're, we're both like, we should stop this. Got you, Just fuckers. Like <laughs> <laughs> we were all like, this is a bad idea. This is going to go to a really dark place. Right. Uh, we should probably cut this off now. We had the wisdom to be like, we're going to stop this now. Yes. Yes. That much was, wisdom that was in the that smartest story. thing. <laughs> so stupid. Not proud of that at all either. Like, <laughs> Drink my pee, you know. Like, <laughs> that's good shit, though, dude. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's good work. Lesson to take away from this: never uh, get in a prank war with Doug. I'm a, a different contest. man. I was 18 years old. I was a different. I would barely call myself a man at the time, so <laughs> I was very emotionally uh, manipulated in a lot of ways. So, but anyway, well, nice. good stuff. I think it's time to move on to the game portion of this podcast and it's time to once again do guess this movie from the audio sound effect and or the line from the movie it's a long-winded name We're rolls off the it. tongue just rolls off the tongue so uh the way this works is i have either a line from a movie or i have a sound effect and your objective and this is all three of you working together your objective is to figure Perfect. out what movie does this come from so uh, Austin, Andy, are you are you movie movie fellas? You like watching movies? Did I not claim I fall asleep to every movie? Oh, you didn't. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I like. I'm a good. I like movies, but I like the movies that I liked when I was 13. Okay. So hopefully these are some movies that I watched when I was 13. <laughs> I took that into consideration, especially when I had Noah on last week, and he goes, uh. <laughs> Uh, he goes, I don't know, man. I don't know how good I'm going to be at this. I'm like, all right, this movie came out in 1999. He's like, okay, the year I was born. I'm like, oh, fuck. Uh, okay. I'm old. <laughs> that might that might be okay, though, but we are going to be looking at Justin for some help. Here. <laughs> well, how old do you uh, think I am? <laughs> we, we could phone one of the older guys. Yeah, can we get a uh, <laughs> phone call? Call Nate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Look, Nate well, John too. John too. John too. Yeah. yeah, Nate and John are in our band, and uh, they're they're in their thirties. I'm pretty sure, maybe forties. I'm not know. sure, but getting older by the second. Yeah. Okay. All right. I I just threw a bunch up here. I'm not going to play all of them, so I'm trying to look at these right now and be like, all right, what's uh, all right? So I got one here. I got one. We're going to start. I think this one is is middle. Me medium. I think Justin will probably get this. 
I, it's, 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 it's my guess, but we're going we're gonna to start off here, and it's relatively simple, I think. So here we go. Here we go. Oh, who the fuck are you? I'm the guy who does his job. You must be the other guy. Mm. Well, I know who the actor is. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Who's fucking question actor? about it. <laughs> Say hi to your mother for me. Yeah, that's right. It's Mark so Justin Wahlberg. You got this, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it is Mark I know Wahlberg. I've heard it. It's Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah it's Mark Wahlberg. But which Wahlberg movie is it? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not overly it. versed in Mark Wahlberg movies. Oh wait, well, okay, hold on. So I'm gonna. This is okay. gonna be a, like a guess, but okay, this is not the answer. We're gonna discuss. Right. This is, this it's is like the trivia. Three of us discussing you know? it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Justin, would it be the one that's like? Is it called A Few Good Men or something that's like uh, all that of the a... fa- all the famous dudes are in it? <laughs> like uh, Mark Wahlberg and um, the dude from Will the Ferrell... ti- the dude from the Titanic. Uh, Billy Zane. Leon- Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> oh. <laughs> and uh, the other. Oh, co- oh. Uh, oh, actually, The Departed. Is it's that- the departed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well I've never done. seen that movie. <laughs> well done. Impressive as hell. Let's let's do yes. it again. It's one of my one of my favorite lines from the movie. Oh, who the fuck are you? I'm the guy who does his job. You must be the other guy. <laughs> this is is this when they're in the uh, the big press conference with uh, Alec Baldwin and So this is when this is when they've um they've they've surprised they figured out where the meeting's going to be. Uh, with uh, with the Chinese and uh, the Whitey Bulger guy, and yeah. uh, they're like, "Where are the cameras?" He's like, I, I, "I didn't have time to set them up." They're like, "Who the fuck set up the cameras in this place?" He goes, "I did." Who the fuck are you? He goes, "I'm the guy that does his job. You must be the other guy." Like they yeah. just just aggressively against each other. So Absolutely. good team effort. The well departed. done. <laughs> okay, there we go. I, I've all been right. meaning to watch that movie. Like excellent all the way movie. Through, Solid but... fucking movie. Excellent yeah. movie. Not that it matters. Won an Oscar. Martin Scorsese film. You got Jack Nicholson in it. You got a whole slew of people. It's really, really good. Also, the first time I watched the movie and I really noticed the editing, I was like, this editing is kind of wild. And it was like intense. Great soundtrack, too. So, and well also, I'll say the first 20 minutes are fantastic. So if you just catch that and then pass yes. that, no worries. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, first like, it's really like Super Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like the, <laughs> it's exactly like Super Troopers. It actually Troopers. has a really long cold open. It really does. Like, it does, yeah. Uh, it, when, when it goes to the party, you're like, holy shit, I've been watching this for 15 minutes and they just now showed me the title. It's kind of wild. Andy might wild. not get to the title. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's true. He'll Maybe, I don't know, Andy, I think you'll be engaged enough to be like, whoa, there's a lot happening. All right, um, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a, a risk with this one, but I, again, I, I think I think Justin will have an advantage here, which is fine because you're all on the same team. But also, I just love this soundbite, so here we go. Okay, I knock him up. Great ass, and you got your head all the way up it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play it again real quick so you can get it. She got a great ass. <laughs> she got that was a really great good. Great ass, and you got your head all the way up it. You uh, sounded just like yeah, him. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> and you got your hands all the way up it. <laughs> Fucking Pacino, man. Talking to Hank Azaria. Mm-hmm. That's right. I have no idea. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. What movie? You do what you gotta do, I'll do what I gotta do. That's Heat, That's right? Godfather or something? That's Heat. Heat. Oh. <laughs> Oh, right. Yeah, the other one. You, oh, you right, come to yeah. my house it, on the day of my daughter's wedding. <laughs> if, you, if you haven't seen Heat, it's just like Super Troopers. <laughs> Perfect. Another great good. Yeah. American crime like thriller movie. If you're Pacino, interested, you've got De Niro, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer. Yeah. Al Pacino. Yeah, you've got it's directed by uh, Michael Mann. <clears throat> it's like really good. Really, really good. Yeah. Nice All one. right, man. We're uh, we're banging them out here. So now I'm like, oh man, how do how deep do we go here? Um, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna th- I'm gonna throw a difficult one out there. We'll see. We'll see how this one goes. All right, here we go. You're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack. <laughs> you got anything? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Key here is that he said you're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. we're not talking about some like I know Doug was just talking about Major League. He was watching that again. So we're not talking about baseball. We're talking about softball. <laughs> right. So it can't be a baseball. We can play it again. 
You're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack. That's Tom Cruise. That is Tom Cruise. Well done. Wow. You're a lousy fucking so One more time for me. You're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack. Uh, is it Jerry Maguire? It's not Jerry Maguire. Mission Impossible. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't represent softball players in that movie as a professional sports it, it is also not any Mission Impossible movie, so good guess. You ruled out <laughs> yeah. six or seven of those Super movies. Super Troopers. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, you're a lousy... Wait, who's Jack? You're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack. Was this the outtakes of A Few Good Men? And he was screaming at Jack Nicholson because <laughs> Jack Nicholson was bad on the cruise. Uh, like... You know, the it was the cast and crew, uh, softball teams. And they it is after. a few good men. Is it? It's a few good yeah, men. That was my guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh my I god! Like, I, I, I was like, I was like, I can't. <clears throat> I mean, you said it. I know you're kind of joking, but I'm like, it's a few good men. It's the scene nice. where Kevin Bacon and Tom Cruise have met up, and like Kevin Bacon's like really shitty to him at a bar, and as like Kevin Bacon's like, you know, you got what you want, and he goes to leave, and like. Tom Cruise, this character, doesn't know what to say, so he gets up and he just goes, you're a lousy fucking softball player, Jack! Oh, and he just kind of looks at him like, all right, dude. That's For not the context that, that, that I heard that, like, <laughs> what phrase you, Build the scene out <laughs> for us. Like, what did you see? So I pictured it in a restaurant, honestly, and uh, they're just, like, getting into a heated argument, and he maybe is, like, talking down about Tom Cruise's profession, and then Tom Cruise is like, you're a lot. You're lousy, and you play softball. So <laughs> honestly, I, I mean, that's, soft, softball's tight, but yeah, you you painted a pretty good picture because they're at a bar, they were sitting down at a booth, they were having a beer, and they had a very intense discussion. And then that was like his response is like he got pissed off, and that's why he said that's pretty good. From that those few words, you were able to paint a pretty darn close. Yeah, I, have you guys seen a few good men? No. I think I've seen it like on TV sure. pieces and whatnot, yeah. but I've never like yeah. sat through You've it. You've seen the clip. You know the clip. You, you can't know, handle, you the can handle the truth. Yeah, yeah right. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, classic movie, classic line. Didn't pick that line because we too easy. Line. Yeah. Too easy. All right. Uh, I'm going to do one more. Oh, we're pressing our luck here. Okay, I we're like We're pressing it. our luck. One more. This is a sound <clears throat> effect. <clears throat> oh. This is a sound effect. Oh, so, ooh, wow. oh, this is a oh. sound effect. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. There's a lot of clues in there. I'm so bad with these. I'm so <laughs> like you give me the lines and I'll usually get them. But man, these sound effects kill me. There's a lot of clues in there. So I'm going to play is the game. He-Man Master of the Universe. It's not He-Man. All right. All right. Here we go. Wait, there's there's something someone's saying something in there, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> About Justin's like this, he's like, Wait. I can feel it. No, what I feel like, it's what you do when you want to hear better. <laughs> Play All right, it again. here we go. Some alien action taking out some power lines. That's what that is. That's a great guess. It's a great guess. You're onto something there. I would almost. I would want to say Blade for some reason. Like Wesley, also, Wesley Snipes guess. is like jumping through the ceiling, but I don't think it's Blade. It's not Blade. Can you give Gone us a wind. genre? <laughs> uh, it's it's in it, Blade is not too far off from it. It's in that direction. Vampires. Not vampires specifically. <laughs> is it Morbius? It's, it's more not Morbius. <laughs> You're like, what are all the vampires? Interview with a vampire. <laughs> um, is it Nosferatu? <laughs> thought for sure is Star Wars. <laughs> also, good guess. Maybe yep. like Interstellar, maybe, or uh, the Halo Two opening. <laughs> 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 It yep. is. Good, good it guy. is in the superhero <laughs> universe. Okay. Okay. Is it Thor? It's got to be an Iron Man or a Thor because you hear that metal dink. All right, like you guys. Are a, yeah, there's like Heimdall. Is it Heimdall like, like, opening the uh, Rainbow Road? 
You're very close Rainbow. in that. <laughs> Let's do it again. So Thor is an element to this. Avenger. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be. But it which one? Yeah. But which one? In which game. one? There's about 1,800 of those yeah, movies now. Yeah, there's so. actually only four. Just four. That's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're, we're obviously not getting this. There's, well, we got, look, I Super said in game, Shuka said, we got three left. <laughs> Technically, uh, technically, Austin got it right. It is Avengers. It's the first one. Oh, it's the first one. It is. That is the Ooh. sound of Thor's hammer hitting Cap's shield. When Cap says, ah. you know, put the hammer down. He's like, you want me to put the hammer down? And he just goes, bong, mm. and he hits, hits the shield. It, and correct like, me if, is there, are, did they hide voices in there? Like, I don't think so. I think like, what you're hearing like is like Nordic, the, Nordic, uh, the, the his ancestors, like d dead Nordic gods. I mean, if you listen again, you can. Ah! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> 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 ah! This is the clip I'm that pretty... I saw on Instagram <laughs> of you guys doing that. <laughs> I will never. I take off all the other ones. I'll never forget that. That one will always be on the soundboard forever. I was waiting for a fart noise. <laughs> you know, I thought about it. I thought about it. I, I considered it, but yeah. So, well, I think you guys did fantastic. I you all did a great good. job. Well good teamwork. Good job, Justin. Yeah, <laughs> job. I realize I'm like, there's complications with this game. I'm like, ah. You guys seen some now and unfortunately older movies? <laughs> I'm pulling yeah. from some classics, but great job. Super, super fun. Very well done. Um, guys, uh, do us a favor. Let us know where people can find you uh, online, where they can find your stuff. Remind everyone once again where they can find all the good stuff. That's Potion Seller. Yeah, so uh, EP's out today. Excellency Fest EP release show coming up. Um, you can follow us at, at Potion Seller MI on all of our, I think on TikTok it's Potion Seller Band maybe, but everything else should be Potion Seller MI. Um, yeah, again, shout out to Robert, uh, shout out to the rest of the Peace Sally boys, Nate and Jake and John, a.k.a. Spider, uh, a.k.a. what's Jake's? Trout, Trout and um, Bobcat slash jack rabbit um this is moonbeam and torque and rugburn rugburn <laughs> and uh yeah also pnwk uh records robert you guys just had him on last month or yes. so and uh robert and sam who run pnwk are way too good to us and um they uh have been supporting us through a lot of this stuff and figuring out a lot of things for us. So big shout out to them and all their support means a lot to us. So follow PNWK records and PNWK music.com for other music on their roster and um, other shit about us too. So hell yeah. Super exciting guys. Check out their goddamn EP. It's available now. Do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's out there. Yep. Uh, also don't forget to follow Mind Gap on all our social medias at Mind Gap Podcast. Uh, be sure to check us out at youtube.com slash Mind Gap Podcast. If you want to watch this, you can, which is great. Uh, leave a like, hit the subscribe. Also, check the link in the description for our Discord, for links to our merch, and links to our Patreon. All those are available there. And uh, don't forget to follow Justin online as well. Uh, on Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, if you uh, like to consume your podcasts the audio way, then any platform where you do that, you can find us. Go ahead, like, share, subscribe, rate, review. All those are great. Sharing is the big one. Let people know that we exist. That's the only way we're going to grow. And then 2EastEighth.com, 2EastEighth on all social media, LoveAndImprovFilm.com, and LoveAndImprovFilm on Instagram. Yes, once again, Andy, Austin, thanks for being here with us. You two are awesome. We love you. It was you. so much fun. And thank you. Thank you. Excellent. We appreciate you. And with that, I'll say, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you. And you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.